Hi, my name is Valerie Bibbalt and I'm the marketing intern here at Oslo Rep. And I'm here today with Patricia Delory. She is the voice and dialects coach for Oslo Rep. Um, she's also the head of voice, speech, and dialects for the FSU Oslo Conservatory mm -hmm. here. So she's a busy woman. I am busy. <laughs> so thank you for taking the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, could you tell us maybe a little bit about what your job entails when, with your work with the rep shows? Sure. I'm the voice, and speech, and dialect coach, which is actually three separate elements. Um, dialect is a character would speak in a particular way from a particular region. So it might be a region of the United States, which is considered a dialect, or technically it's called an accent when it's from a foreign country. Okay. Mm -hmm. Speech, which sounds like it might be dialects, but actually has to do more with clarity, so the audience can clearly understand what the actor is saying. And also has to do with putting them in the world of the play, perhaps, as does the dialect. So that's where this overlap there. And then voice, which has to do with vocal production of the voice, so that the, act the act audience can actually receive the voice, receive the text, receive the story, how the they use their breath, how the actors use their breath, which, interestingly enough, in Once in a Lifetime, is about people that decide to be voice and speech teachers. So it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting intertwining there where I'm training people to play characters that are speech teachers. So those are the three elements of my work. And like you were saying, Once in a Lifetime is particularly interesting because of that, um, because it does revolve around a lot of speech and things like that. Has this show in particular brought about any special challenges, anything different? That I think that the challenges of this show, um, not because of the speech teacher element, it's just interesting intellectually for that reason, I think. <laughs> um, but I think that the most uh, challenging part of this show and also the most fun part is that the actors are playing many different characters. So one actor might play five different characters. And in order to carve out those characters, the director, Mark Rucker, um, is, I think wisely, <laughs> using, of course, physical gesture, but also voice and dialect choices and speech choices. Um, so that someone might, one character might have uh, a French accent that Benjamin Bulkvault, for example, your husband, is playing <laughs> one, of the, one of the characters that has, so in one scene he has a French accent. In another scene he has a Mississippi rural accent. Then there's also, layered on top of those dialects and accents, the, I would call it a dialect, although it's a little bit broader than a dialect, but like the dialect of the 1930s film Hollywood way of speaking. Which is very specific, very different very from specific. the way um, We tend to speak particularly, you know, casually, uh, with a lot of downward inflection, um, so we sort of fall off at the end of our lives. Mm. <laughs> and they lift everything up, and they present everything, and there also is um, certain characters have a way of serving up words, which we call, you know, the operative or the key words, which is something I also work on. Okay. And then putting that all together in this mix of how does this work, and constantly checking in with the actors, how it's working for them, and of course, at the head of the helm of the ship, I guess you would say, the director and what the director's vision is for the entire show. Right. Or Gretchen, for example, Gretchen Poro was another one of our third year students. Um, she was playing two women, and he wanted them very differentiated vocally. So one is has quite a deep pitch, mm -hmm. which he loved, but then it wasn't bright enough, so she had to add forward placement is what it's called, so that the mask of the face is also resonating so the audience can receive the voice. Wow. The other character high-pitched, but then that often requires additional vocal support so that that can be received by the audience. And you want it high-pitched but not shrill, because then that's just aggravating right. for the audience, <laughs> right? right? I can imagine with all the different dialects, all the different, because there's a, a huge cast, a big cast. Just 19. So the, yeah. yeah. I could imagine that without your help and without these clarifications that it, everything could kind of get a little bit muddled um, if it if it didn't have this care to those little details things like that that we might never realize so yeah I mean I feel like my contribution in this has been important and part of the reason is because I'm working with a director who actually understands what I do Wonderful. and can say can really use me in the rehearsal hall like to my best advantage Wonderful. and we can just like forge ahead for the ultimate goal which is the best production for the audience 
Wonderful. That's wonderful. Are there any vocal words of wisdom that you like to live by? <laughs> um, no, I don't have any at all. <laughs> have no words of wisdom. That's my, those are okay. my words of wisdom. <laughs> all right, wonderful. Or allow them to change any time. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, thank you so much again for taking the time. I know you're very you. busy. Yeah. And you can see Patricia's wonderful work with these amazing yes. actors. Amazing actors. <laughs> and also the designers, the director. Just It's, it's really a gorgeous performance. And it ends with a tap dance. Can't Who go can wrong. deny You can't that. go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, right. Valerie. Thank you so much.